This revision video is the third in a series about the A-level chemistry topic of acids and bases. In order for us to understand the purpose of the ionic product of water, we first need to appreciate that at all times water is functioning as both an acid and a base. Because even though water is fundamentally a covalent compound, actually it's able to dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And at all times, water is ever so slightly ionised, so some water molecules will be intact and some of them will have split apart. In reality, a hydrogen ion never actually stays on its own for long. It forms a dative or coordinate bond with another water molecule to make what's known as an oxonium or hydronium or hydroxonium ion. And those are all just different names for the same species, this H3O plus ion. Now, because this is a reversible reaction and it's forming an equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium expression for this. And this is a traditional Kc expression. So as per usual, we've got square brackets to represent concentration, and we've got the products, for want of a better word, on the top of the equation and the reactants on the bottom. Even though water can dissociate to form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, and this is happening all the time, it's happening in quite a small percentage of cases. The vast majority of the water remains intact. And that means that the concentration of water is much, much larger than the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. So when the equilibrium shifts because the temperature changes, the concentration of water doesn't even move by 1%. So there's basically no point in including it in the expression. But we can't just leave it out and still call it Kc. So we use a different equilibrium expression called Kw, or the ionic product of water. And this is just the same, but we've omitted the water. If you were to look up a delta H value for this equilibrium, you would see that the forward reaction, the shift to the hydroxonium ion and the hydroxide ion, is slightly endothermic. And that means that as the temperature increases, the equilibrium will shift to the right. So as you raise the temperature, you get more hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions and less water. What this means, of course, is that as the temperature increases, and therefore the concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions increases, Kw gets larger. What also happens is that without any chemical reaction happening, without any change away from the neutral point, the pH will be getting lower because there are more hydrogen ions because more of the water molecules have dissociated. In the previous video about the pH scale, we looked at a cheats method of working out what the pH of an alkali was, using the idea that at 298 Kelvin, pH and pOH sum together to make 14. But if we've got any temperature other than 298 Kelvin, we can't use that method. And instead, we need to use the ionic product of water. So usually, you'll be given the value for Kw for a particular temperature. And you can use this value along with the concentration of hydroxide ions to calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions. And then we can use our traditional method for calculating pH. Let's look at an example. Here, we're trying to calculate the pH of a 0.0242 mole solution of barium hydroxide when Kw is 1.47 times 10 to the minus 14. So the first thing that I need to do is to work out what the concentration of the hydroxide ions will be. Because this is a group 2 hydroxide, there are two hydroxide ions for every one barium hydroxide. So we need to double the concentration, which gives us 0.0484. We know that Kw is the concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ions. So we can take the number that we've been given in the question for Kw and rearrange this expression to make the concentration of hydrogen ions the subject. By doing this, we can work out that the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be 3.03719 times 10 to the minus 13. From here, we can use our normal method for calculating pH, negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. This gives us an answer of 12.517528, but as we know, pH must always be reported to two decimal places, so we give our final answer as 12.52. Here's one more question with an extra sneaky twist. This time, rather than being given the concentration of potassium hydroxide, I've been given the mass and a volume so I can work it out for myself. To begin with, I need to know what the relative formula mass of potassium hydroxide is. And I can calculate this by adding together the relative atomic masses. 
Now, before I can work out the number of moles, I need to convert the mass, which is currently in milligrams, into grams by dividing it by a thousand. Now I can use mass is Mr. Mole to calculate the number of moles. Now I can take the number of moles and divide it by the volume in decimeters cubed to give a concentration. So rather than just using 25 centimeters cubed, I'm going to need to divide that by a thousand. This gives me a concentration of hydroxide ions of 0.005. Remember, Kw is the concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ions. So if I take Kw and I divide it by the concentration of hydroxide ions, then I'm given the concentration of hydrogen ions, which in this instance is 1.096 times 10 to the minus 11. Now I can do pH being negative log base 10 of that concentration, which gives me a final answer of 10.96. I hope you followed that and are now ready for some practice calculations. Thanks for watching and if you found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more physical chemistry videos coming soon.